very well. Feels so jankled. Feels so distant. I did shower. <laughs> yes, Dr. Backlars, kick us off with this coffee with Tyler. When are the trees going to be planted out here? Great question. I emailed my contractor this morning and asked him the same thing. What did he say? The same thing he said the last time I emailed him, which was nothing because he hasn't gotten back to me. Um, so, he is uh, not on my high list of, of individuals, but... Uh, my understanding was it was going to be towards the, uh, this week or towards the end of next week. So, um, I, I don't know that personally. I'm trusting in my landscaper to make sure that the trees he's warranting for a year will not die when he plants them. But, um, yes, I, I would also agree that it's, it's getting late to start planting really anything. So. Now, it'd be so nice to see him. I don't disagree with you so um, the plan is to open up about half of the patio um, towards the end of June have it open half of it at least for the 4th of July um, half the landscaping will go in when the trees go in um, and then the other half will go in um, after the balconies are done which will be middle July good question have the same one as soon as I know I will let you there or hopefully you just see them. A gorgeous birch that was planted in the middle, middle of a patio about five years old and it was 95 in shape and I thought that thing will never make it and remember how gorgeous it was. It was. And they took it down. So it can be done. Yes. Um, and the trees that they suspect and I forget and if I have anybody from the garden committee feel free to speak up and let me know what trees but it is a very hardy tree um, that does well in confined conditions because obviously it's not out in the nature it is in a courtyard so again that's where I trust uh, the uh, experts um, that we work with so but yes I would love to see some greenery out there love the greenery that was already planted by the residents so thank you for that um, but we'd love to see some trees and also maybe not so much construction work out there. <laughs> what other questions might you have? Over here. Yes, Joe. What's this? What's what? The chairs and the stuff in the hall there. So um, my over? guess is it's probably supposed to go over there where the painting is happening currently. So, um, that's probably where they just staged it, because it was delivered today. Our work is being put up on Friday um, in the common areas, and then the shades and things of that nature are happening in uh, Lindsay Hall. So, Lindsay Hall will still open on Sunday. Um, the bathrooms are tentatively also open on Sunday. I'm here on Saturday, um, so I will see firsthand kind of what that all looks like. Um, and then they'll have some final touch-ups on Monday and Tuesday in Lindsay Hall. And then Wednesday, um, it's back to ours. So the state of the castle did get pushed um, one week. You probably will see that. There will be an update coming tomorrow um, on a number of things. But again, as with construction projects, as you get close to the end, a lot of things come fast and furious and, you know, uh, a lot of information. So. Um, again, the Lindsay Hall and, and construction work and painting is all being seriously done as we speak. Um, artwork is being installed, furniture is here. Um, the Lindsay Hall tables and chairs will be returning on Friday. Uh, the TV is ordered and got bumped and back ordered, so that might not be here till next Wednesday, but it's a brand new um, TV for that space as well. Uh, the overhead speakers will be in, so again, that will then be able to be utilized. Um, will the D elevator open then? Too? The D elevator will also open. Um, that hallway will open. Um, the ramp will open. Um, and the only thing that won't be done, as far as kind of the, the current common areas, is that ground floor historic has new uh, wall coverings uh, or new paint, wall carpets, whatever you want to call them, new carpeting and a new ceiling tile and lights. Um, that's going to be done probably, not going to lie, probably not until mid-July. Mid um, 
Creativity Center. So that's the ground floor where Eric's office is and walking to the Lake Terrace where the Wellness Center is. But that ramp will be open into that space. Um, and that should be next week. So, but yes, the D elevator will then become accessible and, and your routes will get a lot shorter. Um, and your wait times hopefully as well. So um, all that uh, will, will be happening here in the very, very near future. Yes. Um, I'm part of an environmental group of residents, and I just wanted to give you a heads up. We are going to try very hard to get rid of styrofoam. Okay. We're doing a lot of research because we know the cost has to be part of the problem with that. But you'll be hearing about that. Okay. <laughs> So the, the comment was the environmental group, or I think the Green Committee, maybe, as yeah, yeah, formerly known, yeah. um, are working diligently to rid East Castle Place of styrofoam, which I'm a terrible example of as I'm drinking out of styrofoam. So um, I will not be drinking. I do use a reusable cup every morning. I want you to know I do not use styrofoam. This is outside my norm. Um, so yes, uh, it's more sustainable, I assume, more of the, the yes. compostable. Compostable um, or even recyclable. Recyclable. Yeah. So Whatever. I saw a couple of individuals with their, maybe a Sandra, the had a reusable yes. uh, cup. So and that, I see the display up there. That would be our preference. Yep. But we know that's not. You know, we're also thinking of those, uh, the food, you know, we, yep. how our food is delivered and that. Yep. Um, we'll stick on the food, I'm sure it might be on everybody's mind. Um, it was brought up the Food and Beverage Committee, and, and that's Majarka. Um, and so kind of just an update there. And, um, you know, obviously there was a, a tragic accident, a tragic event, rather not, not necessarily accident, um, that happened that unfortunately her daughter um, passed away. Um, again, was not anything um, that her daughter did. Um, her daughter was merely taking a, a walk. Um, and, and of course she was struck by a vehicle. So, um, you know, and, and again, I, as we're walking through these last couple of weeks and there's been a number of staff members, you know, that have impacted, obviously all, everybody's had thoughts of, of Majarka. Um, she will be returning. Um, we've had conversations with her, but she's going to be returning in her time. Um, and and I, I have a timeline. Um, that, that she tentatively has, but um, you know, it, it's a little bit out there. So again, everybody works through things differently. Um, and again, I know that there's been some different speculations and things of that nature, and obviously it's gonna be a lot just when Majarka walks back through the doors, but I know that she appreciates the support and love everybody shared with her so far, and wants that to continue, and, and you know, she, she sees East Castle Place as a family. And so again, um, very happy about that component of it. Um, obviously, um, it's unimaginable, you know, and, and again, to to have uh, that event happen, and, and again, I think we've all been touched by tragedy at certain times in our lives, but um, it really hits close to home. And so, again, um, I, I credit her, her team um, for supporting her um, in, in showing her that she's been a great leader because the services that they provide to you continue. And so again, Tim and Tanya mentioned we, we couldn't go backward, that would be a disservice to Majarka, you know? And so, um, you know, I, I just, again, ask for your your understanding and your patience as we continue to, to work through that um, piece of it. And again, um, as things progress, you know, we'll definitely let you know. Um, it was definitely something that, you know, is still shocking, you know, and, and so the uh, support that, you know, and, and again, I was able to attend the funeral in Kiel, and, and um, it was a beautiful, beautiful ceremony, um, but again, it's, it's just unimaginable, so, um, but at the same time, um, you know, Majorca is strong, and, and she's got an incredible family and, and support. Supporting cast as well. So, um, again, that's difficult news to share with you, obviously. Um, and again, I ask just 
you know, to continue to keep Majarka and her family, her thoughts and prayers. And again, we look forward to when she returns um, to East Castle. So. Um, on other news, uh, construction related, I mean, we talked about Lindsay Hall, we talked about everything else that's happening in the courtyard. Um, a lot of things are happening, um, coming back to us. We had a great depositor event a few weeks back um, with, um, you know, your future neighbors uh, in here. I think many of you took part in that in 1884. That was incredible to see. Um, if you weren't aware, and I think I shared this with everyone, we do have a delay in construction, and that was till August 14th. That timeline has not changed. Unfortunately, that is also probably the fitness center. Um, so, um, again, working as diligently and quickly as possible to get that uh, space open for you, uh, but also want to make sure that it's completed space. You know, and don't just want it to be a space that you know you can work out in, and you know, three outlets work, and you know, we'll work on the other ones, and we got construction crews in there. So again, um, CG Schmidt is doing everything they can, working Saturdays, um, sometimes even Sundays, um, to to complete that project. So, um, as I say that, I had one more reminder. Um, you'll see it in the memo. Um, Juneteenth is coming up on Monday. Um, as part of our, you know, employees initiatives and diversity inclusion portion of our of our employee and of our campus, um, we recognize Juneteenth as a holiday for our staff members. And in that vein, um, the dinner service will not be dinner service. It will be a lunch service on Monday. June 19th in the recognition of Juneteenth. So you'll see a little bit more limited staff on Monday. Um, again, that's something that we will, this is our third year in recognition of that date. Uh, but just wanted to make a note of that. You will see uh, a note um, and a memo reminder, but also a note going up um, tomorrow in the Bistro just as a reminder. Again, that's just for Monday, Juneteenth. Um, as we as we go forward, so um, what else? What else is going on? The front desk is not moving back like next week. That's going to be probably now after the fourth of July. They're still wrapping some things up. Um, the fireplace is going in, um, but once Lila and Fumada move back, I want to make sure they don't have construction crews overhead. It's probably nice, um, and that they don't have to move temporarily to, you know, once that, once they move back, I want that desk out of there and to get a grand piano back in that space and, you know, to make it the, the true Bradford Terrace entrance that we all have known. And also, I want to make sure that, you know, they have operational things that they're looking out of as well. So. And, and at that time, is that when the newspapers will move here? and the sign-up book will move to the library? Yep, so that, that's the other piece that we're still waiting on. Um, there is a, supposed to be a built-in desk. It's uh, there. It's there now? Oh, really? You got it's late-breaking there. news that, that I don't have yet. So, Because every time I look, it wasn't there, so I stopped looking for a little bit. So I'm glad to hear that. Um, is, it was this morning? OK. Um, so, so yes, that's what yes. the newspapers will come back this way, as well as um, we'll have sign-up books and, and things of that nature. So. Where are the newspapers going to be? In, in the 1884. So as you're getting your cup of coffee, you can come across the way and uh, read the paper, because that's usually what I, I'm seeing. Oh, it was the issue with the fireplace. I noticed today they had expanded the opening yeah. to the right. So I think the um, they replaced the fireplace with what they thought was a like fireplace, but was not a like fireplace. Um, so when it came, because it is a brand new fireplace, yeah. But I think the one that was installed was a 2006 model, and we have a 2023 model. So things changed probably, because um, I know they did rerun ventilation and things of that nature. It wasn't as simple as what they thought they were giving us. Just put it in and plug it in, and you're done. Mm -hmm. um, it was much more complex than that once they dug into it. So, um, so yes, uh, that uh, is a work in progress. Um, also, hopefully soon to be functional and, and finished. Um, you know, I think that's one thing that 
uh, CG as much as we do. Um, it's those details um, that, again, there's, there's an overall schedule and, and how things are turned back to us and things of that nature. And again, it's, it's trying to get crews focused on, on the right areas and the line and all those fun stuff. So. Yes. Well, I, I would like to ask if anyone faces the gazebo courtyard area, if they notice this being less of the droning noise that has been so prevalent for the last two years. We have, I would say Kathy and I, uh, the, the, especially in the early spring when the temperatures in between warm and cold, uh, you have warm days and you can open up the windows. And there was one day that I found it to be objectionable and I didn't think anything was happening with it. But then I noticed it had stopped. The noise had basically stopped. There's, there's a slight hum that is acceptable and there's swirling sound. But that droning noise that was so objectionable uh, has basically stopped. So I'm just wondering uh, if, if everybody else has noticed that. You probably didn't make any comment on it uh, to yourselves because nobody was drawing any attention to it. What was it? Um, Eric tried, in fact, he did lower the temperature that the air conditioner kicks in from 53 degrees down to 43 degrees. So as it gets springtime, where it would reach to reach 53 degrees, the heating unit would still be grown in weight. It's now cutting out that much lower temperature, and it's not having an effect on the heating within the building at all. And it's something that he wanted to try to do. And uh, I, I saw him in the hallway not too long ago, and I said, it apparently is successful. We, we need to wait through the fall to see if it happens in next year. But um, uh, one of those nebulous irritants that for the people who face that courtyard, uh, I think basically is taken care of. So congratulations, Eric. Well, and congratulations to you for kind of spearheading it on behalf of your neighbors and, and working with Eric on that. I know that um, you also have a part, so thank you for that. And I will pass along to Eric and, and the maintenance team. Um, I'm glad that we can have some results. Some great news. What else? Oh, yes, Dr. Backlars. I'd like to come back to the safety of our, I mean, here we're dealing with Majerica and her terrible loss. But that's very apt to happen to us here, one of us. The traffic here is so horrible. And they don't believe in stopping for pedestrians. Many of them do not. And it's the state law. And the police could put out, or whoever puts them out, those, they have pillars, little cones, cones or whatever, mm -hmm. that say it's state law. Mm -hmm. And I know, and I talked to the police about it because I've seen them in the car, I've mentioned this before and talk to them about it and they said that as soon as people, as soon as the uh, drivers enter a city limits, they forget all about it and they don't pay any attention to it. And I think we've got to find a way, I mean I'm ready to throw rocks. <laughs> I am. So. And uh, I've also bought some poles and I figure if I walk with them I can hit them in the car. If they come too close to me. Well, I mean it. They're you're violent. I know no, you're But I think if, if you contact the police, it might take multiple contacts because we dealt, Dennis and I go to an inner city church that we uh, support. And it took them a few years to get things done. But they just repeatedly went back to the city. And they, they you, who did this? A church uh, on 17th and Walpus. But you, they're, is a department because you all probably all seen the intersections now where they're making people not cut the corner. They put those mm -hmm. cones way out and narrow the street. They could do any number of things. It's called traffic calming. Mm -hmm. And you could do any number of things to calm the traffic. Yeah. And it does need to be, I, I agree. 
Especially so, at the stop sign um, on Farwell and Bradford. Prospect and Bradford. Uh, prospect as we take yes, that, right. Stop. You have to just wait and see if they're going to stop before yeah. you cross. My, I will tell you, my son-in-law taught his children before they step into the street at a crosswalk to look the driver in the eye mm. and to be sure that the driver what sees them. Well, these people are, and they're not going to do it for us like they do for little kids. Um, but there's, yeah. Well, that's a very bad place when you're coming from the grocery store over here. Yes. And you get out in that corner, you don't know if they're going to go straight or if they're going to turn. Right. Most of them turn on the Maryland. Mm -hmm. Maryland. Mm -hmm. Maryland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that it is just it's scary to death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other one is Lake Drive. People that are driving on Lake Drive seem to think that there's no reason for them to stop for them. I don't know why it is, but that's the way it is. And I think that, I, I don't know what you could do, but it's just something to stop them. So, on that note, I mean, I've had a conversation with the alderman um, regarding you know, all the neighborhood and safety a little bit from low vision you know the low vision group is very you know wanting yeah, to have worse than somebody right like me. And, and so again unfortunately statistically and what the data shows is that we're we're not the worst area and that there's other areas that are much worse and so that's where dollars potentially are going um, now he's also he mentioned to reach out to the downer bid uh, which we are a part of, so the business uh, district, so to speak, and so um, we will be reaching out to them. Um, I'm happy to reach out to Milwaukee Police Department on East Castle's behalf um, and say, you know, what can we do to curb some of this? And if there is traffic calming, I think is the term you use that we can use. Um, but at the end of the day, um, one piece of safety that I also just want to reiterate and mention is. Unfortunately, um, the respect for your elders is not as apparent. And so if you do try to take matters into your own hands, I, I do strongly advise you not to do that because it could result in other issues that you don't want. Um, so again, I'm just gonna caveat that again. You are an independent living resident and the choices that you do make um, are, are up to you. I'm gonna do everything I can do to protect you inside these walls of these Castle Place and around these castle plates, and I'll do my due diligence with the met, um, the uh, devices that I have. Um, but again, um, to to go and you know throw rocks or, or hit a car, I, I don't know what the other outcome of that may be. Um, you know, but again, I, I caution you against that, and I caution just again. You know, there, there's other. There's craziness in the world, I guess, is all I, it comes back to. And again, it, it doesn't make sense to a lot of us. And I guess I just want you to be safe and make the best choices for you. Um, but again, I'll do everything I can to make sure it's safe inside these walls of East Castle Place, as well as um, around East Castle. It might be worthwhile for us to write to our alderman. Absolutely, and I encourage you. Well, can I mean, we, we get could our we, alderman and the police to come Somebody here should talk do a letter writing thing, you know, get us a form and get, I mean, that would be kind of a nice project. Sure. The other thing would be to talk to the other, I mean, there's the Catholic home, there's yes. senior apartments. I mean, are they feeling this uh, at all? Sure. And right. what are right. they doing? And part of what sets us apart as a senior living place is this wonderful walkability. Right. I mean, it's definitely better than some of the others. So. Right. But I think a better writing might be a good thing. I'm, I'd be willing to get up on, you know, sometimes. Make a, a format and yeah. um, <laughs> we'll do, get signatures. Or, yes, you could do. as an urban planner, I will call him and ask him who he thinks we should write to. Okay. What yeah. would be most effective? The Department of Transportation is somebody I have reached out to, but not with great success. Yeah. Um, so. And just one person. Yes. Right. I, I mean, many yeah. before they do something. Yeah. 
or sadly a terrible accident. Right, which we want to avoid. Yeah, Jim's got a question. Jim. Will we have to wait till August 15th for people not to start working for some Probably. Don't want that to happen, but again, that's the, I, again, when I talk to C.G. Schmidt, they say it starts, their start times are 7 a.m. I, I respond to them, and again. They're starting at 640, 620. Okay. They started this morning before 7 So, I will reiterate that, start time 7 a.m. Um, my hope is 640, not, not acceptable. So, um, but yes, my hope is, by July 17th, a number of the noise and contractors and construction crews are cut in half um, at minimum. So again, hopefully that also reiterates the, the noise. Um, tentatively on Monday, um, the back alleyway will be shut down for the good majority of the day. We have our tentatively a, a very large chiller that may go on the roof. Um, again, that's all tentative as we speak. So. Um, just an FYI there. By helicopter. By large, large crane. Mm -hmm. So, what else? When's the uh, uh, glass going in in the front entrance? I was told tentatively the first week of August. Uh -huh. um, so, we also are owed a new sliding door. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> that sliding door if you didn't know it's from water tower <laughs> so oh they need gosh. one <laughs> um, so again all that's supposed to transpire expire between August 1st and, and the second week of August okay. so um, and then the library books that I know um, I received a couple emails on and I've been very delinquent in um, they are here and they'll be brought up by either end of the day today but not not here not here creativity center yes creativity Thank center you. by the end of the day today or tomorrow by noon. Okay. So, because if it's not by me by the end of the day, it'll be me tomorrow morning taking books on because <laughs> I've been way too delinquent. So, I know that where they are. Um, so, yes. Appreciate the library committee's um, efforts and, and everybody's efforts in, in working um, and, and patience uh, with me. Um, one other note, we do have a tentative resident grand opening um, specifically for you um, many many more details to come um, but that tentative date now is August again I know I'm saying August but July will be here before we know it um, August 24th so that will be August 24th it's a, it's a Thursday August 24th again that's for just you uh, for residents there will be a large celebration Again, everything should be open by then. Um, you will, will even have some new neighbors um, that will want to attend. And then our large grand grand opening. See, I have large grand opening. The large grand grand is September 14th. Um, we're also going to christen the courtyard um, with a celebration and happy hour. Um, and that will be towards the end of July. Um, again, that's as long as my landscapers get back to um, so I'd really like to be able to christen it with real trees and plants. But that again will be just for you as residents. Um, and that'll be kind of a christening of the courtyard. I talked to Tim, we are planning to have outdoor seating for the 4th of July out there for a, a kind of celebration out in the dining space or out in the courtyard again. Um, you may only be able to have half of the courtyard, which essentially is the same amount as we had pre-construction. Pre but again, knowing that again, Regardless of Wisconsin decided to do the last couple of days, it is going to get to that warmer weather, um, and I think everybody wants to be outside and enjoy it. So, um, will there be any time for residents to go to look through the new, all the new construction in the tower before it gets is occupied, just to get an idea of what it, how it is? August fourteenth, um, you may bump into a mover of the first resident that's moving in. Um, but yes, that will, you know, and, and most likely it's going to be before that um, because there's going to be a time where I'm going to say you, you shouldn't go in there. It's obviously safe to go in there. There's some finishing touches and 
if I'm not here at night and I can't stop you, that's up to you guys. So, uh, but no, you'll start to see some things kind of open up again, um, especially uh, the common areas on the floor. Thank you.